Welcome to Winchester News Online with Kayleigh James. Hello and welcome to Winchester News Online. Here are today's top stories. Road closure set to cause chaos. Student union election, your vote counts. And travel Mars, Totten's first home defeat of the season. Local students and businesses could be affected by the upcoming Andover Road Bridge closure, preventing commuters travelling into the city. The work fell assistant cross closure and is expected to cause travel congestion whilst Network Rail is completing the work. Stuart Appleby reports. Andover Road Bridge is set to close for three months. The move follows Network Rail's reconstruction of the bridge, which will start on April 12th. Andover Road Bridge, located on the B3420 Andover Road, is just north of Winchester train station. The nearby Peter Simmons College has sent a message to its students. We have recommended that they travel earlier than they normally would to avoid the delays caused by the inevitable congestion. It could be a risky place to be. And we're very concerned about road safety. I fear they're going to be worse than those problems at St Cross, though because the more people use this route. Winchester businesses could also be affected by the works. A local fish and chip shop owner declined to comment on camera, but did give this statement. I've got to the point where I don't care anymore. I've given up with it. You're never going to win against network rail. Churches, a heating and plumbing company, had this to say. Um, so if the Andover Road gets jammed up, our engineers have got to find a way of going around the Andover Road, which once again will affect the route to our work, our customers. Uh, so our financial implication will, will be uh, affected until all the works are completed. Network Rail have defended the works. We have taken all reasonable steps to keep disruption caused by this important work to an absolute minimum. We have held numerous meetings and had discussions with many businesses and schools in the Andover Road area. It remains to be seen whether the local community will be affected by the reconstruction. Stuart Appleby, Winchester News Online. Security at the University of Winchester is searching for a suspicious male following two thefts this week. A vending machine in the sports hall was broken into on Monday evening and a man was seen acting suspiciously in and around the Fred Wheeler and Tom Atkinson buildings. It is believed he has broken into vending machines at the Royal Hampshire County Hospital as well as on the King Alfred campus. The mayor was suspected of both thefts, then took money from the coffee machine in the staff common room. Security has reported that he is a dangerous individual and anyone who sees him should contact the site stewards immediately. Winchester students will go to the polls this Thursday to elect new rep representatives to the Student Union. Three candidates are running for the position of Student Union Union President. One less than last year. John Hopley finds out more. With Thursday student elections on the horizon, Jimmy Whale is hopeful to retain Winchester Student Union presidency this year, but with fierce competition, Thursday's result will reveal whether or not he will continue on as Union president. It took me probably a good three or four months to find my feet in the job, have the connections, have the networking, and then actually start building on it. I mean, I think I've built quite a lot in the last two, three months, and I want the next year to just finally see it through. I want more opportunities for students to become distinctive for the employment market. So it's all about the national campaigns, the political issues that are coming on now. Work with student services more basically representing all students. Um, I want to increase like, the interactivity of the website as well, so basically any students can come in like any time and speak to me, and, like, so like maybe make an interactive option on the website. I feel like President's like, made for me so I can represent and really contribute to the growth of the student union. There isn't any support from the student union in relation to issues regarding housing. There are quite a few bad landlords out there. So one of the things I want to set up is a forum and a bi-monthly meeting where people can bring their issues forward. As well as that, I'm looking to lobby um, the university and local landlords to lower the price of um, housing. With each candidate offering different manifestos, students will find out on Thursday if Winchester Student Union has a new president. John Hopley, Winchester News Online. South Winchester's Park and Ride is set to ruin the habitat of Winchester's endangered hazel dormouse. Claire Rice Brandy went to find out what the county council is doing to prevent it. In April, hundreds of hazel dormice will wake from hibernation to find their habitat destroyed by the construction of South Winchester's Park and Ride. What they don't know is that Hampshire County Council have gone to extraordinary lengths to try and protect them. But at what cost? 
The council is set to spend £2,000 on a bridge for the dormice, which are a protected species, and a further £5,000 on a tunnel so that lizards can pass underneath the busy entrance to the park and ride. When there are some rare creatures, then it makes sense to do what you can to protect them. The question I suppose everybody has is £7,000 seems an awful lot for a bridge and a tunnel. Hampshire County Council's Executive Member for Environment, Councillor Mel Kendall, said... We have taken great care to protect the environment and make the new park and ride facilities as sustainable as possible. The only question remains, will the Dormice take to the bridge? Clarice Brandy, Winchester News Online. Now it's over to James with the sports. Thank you, Kayleigh. With five games in hand over top of the table Windsor and Eton, Totten were looking to keep up the pressure with victory over Poulton Rovers. Jason Curtis reports. Totten's game against Poulton Rovers proved a fiery game, with Totten having a penalty shout turned down early on. Totten maintained their early pressure and were unfortunate to not take the lead. Poulton were poor in the first half with only a few tame efforts on the Totten goal. But this will change in the second half as they led a rare breakout with Chris Lane doing all the hard work to put the visitors ahead. The Poulton bench were also keen to show Totten how it's done. The home side fought back and created plenty of chances, but even the Rovers' defence were performing heroics. Lady Luck was shining on the visitors as they escaped a defensive howler that could have led to an equaliser. Totten's front line were unable to make the most of their chances, with the ball seemingly unwilling to cross the Rovers' line. It was excellent defending by Poulton that ensured that they maintained their one-goal lead and kept Totten at bay. Frustrations boiled over in the final five minutes with a terrible tackle by Ryan Scott on Alex Ball. The scrap summed up what turned out to be a rough match and this showed Totten's frustrations. The game looked like it was going to be a draw, so we're frustrated with the disappointment in terms of losing a game. But it's football and I think sometimes in the game you, you have games where you underachieve or you underperform uh, and you have to show other qualities in, in order to, to win the points. And now for the non-league roundup. Eastleigh started to a one-all draw with playoff rivals Bath City, with Ross Bottomley earning the Spitfires a point in the second half. Basingstoke's erratic form continued with a 3-1 home defeat to Dover, Gary Fruin scoring the consolation for the home side. And Winchester City continued their poor run of form with another defeat at the hands of Hailing United, Joshua Case scoring the winner as United took all three points. And that's it for the sports this week, and now back over to Cayley. Thanks, James. And finally, the company Proactor is advertising for a product testing associate to test their fat-binding diet pills. If you'd like to be able to sit at home all day every day eating junk food, then Catherine Hayes has found the perfect job for you. A diet pill company is looking for the ultimate average Joe to sit at home 365 days a year to be a couch potato and to gorge on junk food. So Proactor are willing to pay people £23,750 to sit at home eating things like pizza and chips. Does that sound like a job you'd want to do? I think that I need, I'd need to be more active. I wouldn't be able to get sort of healthy doing that sort of job. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it as a proper job just because... Yeah, it's not really my type of thing, eating all day. And... I think it's a bit strange, but I can totally see why people would do it. I personally wouldn't. The company requires the prospective employee to attend weekly catch-ups and to increase their calorie intake by 16% whilst introducing Proacto into their diet. You need the balance in the diet. So if you're just eating a lot of carbohydrate or a lot of um, additives, you get a lot of additives in um, Chinese takeaways, a lot of MSG, monosodium glutamate, which is very bad for the body. Um, again, you, you need a balanced diet. That's, uh, that's all I can say, really. <laughs> so does Proactol's ultimate average Joe actually exist? Catherine Hayes, Winchester News Online. Thank you for watching. Join us again next week. And for the latest developments, log on to winall.co.uk. Goodbye.